Hey, this is Mike Beard. One of the things uh, that got me into the Manosphere back in, I would say, late 2019, you know, during the pandemic or whatever, is I ran into a video with uh, Danica Marie. And, you know, I first come across her, you know, we got this girl with this large breast, really attractive, got a crown tattoo around the chest. And uh, then I know she had tattoos on her arms and you know, she was kind of cute. She was kind of country, kind of ghetto. And then she explained she was from St. Louis. I really understood that. I actually went to school in Missouri. And I had visited St. Louis as a child. So I kind of understood what was going on there. And, uh, you know, she kept talking. And she was about 28, but she sounded like she was like 56 years old. Um, she was talking a lot of wisdom and talking a lot of... Uh, things and her emphasis on respecting the man and respecting her husband and talking about how she had changed from being a real wild lady and disrespectful and being a user and kind of a you know modern day uh <laughs> it girl almost a city girl but really wasn't a city girl because of her um background uh, she was actually a real chase woman although she may look uh, worldly and street. She actually has uh, a built-in moral code and uh, some morals about her. So shout out to Dan Danica Marie and uh, Mr. Bell. And, uh, you know, so I was watching her and after I saw her a couple videos, I guess Kevin popped up on my screen because, you know, generally when you watch uh, one type of content, then it refers you to some others. So I was pleasantly pleased to go from Danica Marie's channel to uh, to watching Kevin and seeing the things that he was talking about. So, you know, um, when I started watching the Manosphere, I was depressed. I was almost 280 pounds. I think I had just got passed over for a promotion and I was unhappy in a number of things, a number of ways. So I think I was 52 and a half, you know, pretty much had a dead end mentality the way I was thinking. I wasn't really motivated at the time and wasn't really pushing as hard as I could be and then I started listening to Kevin talk about you know what he's done and things he'd done and you know the cultural references that he would make to some of the rap songs uh, the cultural references he would make to the television shows the emphasis he put on about how you know the narrative was one-sided and it talked about you know Rick Lake and all the other talk shows that and how they portrayed black men during the time I lived through that and grew up with that you know I'm 55 now, uh, you know, um, but the way he portrayed himself at the time, you know, seemed like I was a couple years older than him, give or take, based on um, the age uh, bracket that he was placing himself in. But either way, he was, we were within three years of each other, two years of each other. And so the things he was calling out, I understood. I'm from the Southwest. I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Well, my family's from Texas, and I actually have a lot of extended family that live in Oklahoma City. And so... I knew just what he was talking about. I've been to Oklahoma City and driven through there and visited a little bit, you know, but I understood what he was talking about. I kind of um, identified with the things that he was saying, you know. Uh, he talked about being in martial arts and, you know, I was a boxer and he talked about being a trumpet player and a band uh, major and stuff like that. I've been in band and I've been uh, a musician and I mean, even restarted since I started watching him uh, back playing my instruments and doing different things like that. So, you know, I had a lot of motivation watching the show. I used to watch it on my shift at work and, you know, watch it at home. And, you know, it just basically turned me into a manosphere junkie, you know. I um, started doing things differently. Uh, initially, I lost 30 pounds listening to him. I was working out and grinding and lifting. You know, I was in here uh, with the pandemic. You know, I could go to work, but I pretty much couldn't go anywhere else. So I was in here hitting the weights and hitting the pile. I was, you know, putting up like 225 on the incline and putting up about 265 on the flat bench, all lifting by myself. I didn't go any heavier because I was by myself and I had everybody to spot me or whatever. But I was cranking it out because I was trying to become the best version of myself. And I was reshaping my body. I was reshaping my mind and getting my, my um, drive back. And, you know, there's different things that you come across to the Manosphere. Uh, you know, Kevin Sanders was known as the godfather of the black Manosphere. And, you know, I listened to Rolo Tomasi, and Rolo Tomasi is actually considered uh, 
the godfather of the Manosphere in general on the on the white side and I was listening to him and you know there's just so many great statistics and so many great books and so many motivational factors that they would talk about you know they talk about that a man doesn't come into his own until he hits about 55 to 57 maybe 59 that's where your peak earnings starts coming in wouldn't you know it that's when I started grinding a little bit more you know Kevin would talk about how if you only got a job making so much money like 28,000 he was saying go get a part-time job and work that make another 14,000 that puts you at 42,000 you're a single guy that should put you in the ability to be able to start dating and start doing some stuff that you want to do he was like you shouldn't be dating and, or talking about dating if you didn't have no job so you know uh, I had time and during that time I was working in corrections so I started ramping up my overtime you know I started working one and a half or two extra shifts and some of it was by choice but you know corrections is a mandatory overtime situation so Sometimes the job was making me stay, and then there was other times where I was making me stay. There was one point where I was averaging 74 hours a week, and uh, so with that, my income, you know, increased dramatically. So, you know, you start hearing the statistics on blackdemographics.com, and I started walking into them, you know. I started putting myself where I was making more than the average man. Well, I was already doing that before I heard about Kevin, but then when I heard about Kevin and the different things he was teaching about, what the ministry was talking about, I started striving toward making some jumps. So, you know, I went from about 45 up to 60, and, you know, I am, you know, shooting for 75 would be my long-term goal. I may not fully get to a full-fledged 100,000 or the 110 for the high-value man stuff, but I definitely would be in the top of the Henry's or slash Blue Henry's or whatever you want to call it. Um, right now I'm back uh, in the education field, so I go back and forth between those two industries. And what it does for me is it, it gives me the flexibility. Uh, I work with uh, the trouble kids on both sides, but, you know, the one thing about it is I'm able to be a strong male role model for them and um, have some incentives and positives in life. So, you know, I'm back working out and, you know, I'm back doing my music and I'm back expanding different things. You know, I'm active in ministry. I'm doing all the things that I really wanted to do. Uh, well, I was uh, looking at going to school recently, and that fell through, but I'm probably going to hit that back up again. You know, I am. I have the ability to drive, and I'm motivated again. You know, I think, you know, prior to the pandemic and looking at the pandemic, I think a lot of people had to do some soul searching, and I came out of it encouraged. I came out of it still confident in my ability, still confident to do some of the things that, you know, Maybe some people past midlife or some people on the downside may have been thinking they couldn't do. But I'm encouraged. I still think I can get some things accomplished. I still have some goals and set for myself. And uh, I'm motivated. So I'm uh, motivated to be my best self. I am encouraged to continue to be a content creator and put out stuff for people like myself, uh, young men, older men, whatever, you know just anybody who needs to hear it because it was a life-changing thing for me to ch get a chance to sit at home at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock whenever his shows came on and just listen to it. And yes, yeah, some of those shows were really long and now I miss it like the devil because, you know, I never took for granted that he was coming on. I never took for granted, you know, when he was out sick. I never took for granted when he was on vacation. I watched those shows. I watched the Cologne shows. I watched the shows about shoes. I watched all the stuff about what their father should have told you, you know. And I still think there's probably some videos that I haven't seen of his. But, yes, I'm a junkie. I was quoting it forward and backward and, you know, chapter and verse. Um, you know, because I found him, I found, you know, Uncle D. You know, I think looking at him led me to the lead attorney. Looking at him led me to uh, MTR. You know, uh, other guys like Don Lexi, who were watching Mr. Samuels, as, as Don would say, um, you know, started his program and platform, and now Thon is a top-notch uh, guy. Thon has completely changed the way he dressed. Thon has completely changed his background. He's a father now. He's uh, pursuing, you know, long-term relationship and possibly even marriage. You know, he's moving on. So the the effect of chaos in the person's life is really strong. And uh, you know, I will, I'm extremely motivated even to this day just because of having that content. And, you know, you can never underestimate, you know, the value of these shows. You know, we've discussed and talked about how sometimes with the current pressures of the society and 
the different things and pressures and stresses that men are up to that sometimes they may even unalive themselves. And so, you know, I uh, I definitely want to be a source of encouragement. I just really want to pass it on to the guys that are not where they want to be or think that they should do better or whatever, that there is hope, there is light at the end of the tunnel, but it's not going to come to you easy. You're going to have to go back and do the work. Yes, I've got to change my eating habits. Yes, I've got to do more cardio. Yes, i got to get better sleep and better rest. Yes, I have to take better care of myself mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and every other way around. But, you know, I'm striving every day to be a good son, to be a good husband, to be a good brother, you know, to be a good uncle, you know, to be a good associate minister. I'm striving to be a professional on my job and just do all the things that I can because I can be a positive uh, black male representation, a black male role model to so many different people. And I can change the narrative with the black male profile and be somebody who is above the standard that some people think and what other people think about us. And I'm just happy and inspired to have a platform to share this on and echo the sentiments of all the men who are working. You know, one thing that Kevin said, you know, before he passed was that it didn't need to be somebody copying him, but there needed to be another 10,000 men doing the same thing, saying the same thing. And so I took that as a challenge. I took it as a challenge that, you know, I needed to be another voice in this situation. I don't know how many people, people I will ever reach. I don't know what the goal is. I haven't really set any goals as of yet, but I'll tell you this. Uh, I'm doing my best to become a quality content creator and to tell the truth and give people a real life look into um, a man's life, uh, something as uh, Crimson may call it from now and then, the Crimson Cure, Kendra Davis, she calls it.